So I like mods for video games. If you watch my channel for any duration, you probably know this. Obviously, as of late, there's been a shift towards Fallout 76 focused videos, but there definitely is going to be more mod videos and even still they're intermixed between all those Fallout 76 videos. And I'm sure many of you actually subscribed for Fallout 4 modding content. Well, it goes back even way before then. Back before I was doing Fallout 4, I was covering Minecraft and more specifically Minecraft mods. Modding has always been something that I obviously put on my YouTube channel between Fallout 4 and Minecraft, but even beyond that, just when I play games personally, the games you can mod are always the ones I find I enjoy the most. And even just looking at my most played games on Steam, pretty much all of them are highly moddable and I played them highly modded. So either way, mods are a big passion of mine, and obviously when mods came to consoles, I was super excited for it. Even though I don't play on Xbox myself, one, that's a much bigger audience to make videos for when I make Fallout 4 modding videos and in addition a much wider audience for mod authors so hopefully we get more mods to come out. Well it actually seems like that if you're an Xbox user mod support is only going to get larger and very soon. This is all coming from a presentation that was leaked or that this website Windows Central somehow got their hands on. For those unaware, the way modding works on Xbox One right now is Bethesda had to actually set up their own system for players to actually upload mods to a website and then get them on Xbox. Microsoft obviously kind of approved of this and supported it, but didn't explicitly enable it. On the flip side, if you go to Steam and Steam Workshop, the way mods work for many games is you can just kind of enable it. The Steam Workshop system is something supported by their platform and Steam created it themselves. Game developers can simply tap into it and enable it for their specific game. Well, it seems like Xbox is getting something much more similar to Steam Workshop than what we have in Fallout 4 and Skyrim Special Edition right now. It's going to be dubbed the Xbox Community Content Platform, and one of the slides we have actually introduces a lot of the features that are going to be coming to the table with this, obviously featuring support for user-generated content, or UGC. And that slide is fairly technical because it's obviously trying to appeal to game devs, but put simply, what it's allowing you to do is now integrated into Xbox Live is going to be this mod support API that game developers can tap into. From there, they can define what is moddable in their game and exactly how you download that thing. And in addition, you can actually set metadata on some of these mods so when you google something it will pop up. Obviously for Fallout 4 a lot of the google searches pertaining to that game are pertinent to mods. So you can google ODST mod Fallout 4 and it'll pop up on the Xbox Store mod page or whatever the mod page is in Xbox Live. And in addition, all this will be integrated onto the store page if you'd like it to. So when you're going on Xbox Live trying to buy a game, you can see on the sidebar all the available mods, very similar to what Steam does. And honestly, one of the most exciting parts about this is it's actually apparently coming at the end of the summer. According to this Windows Central article, behind the scenes, a lot of people got access to this in March and then an announcement should be coming shortly shortly and maybe we'll see one of those announcements where it's like all right yeah you can download it right now like you could log on the xbox live after watching that conference or presentation and see mod support for whatever game it may be but to play devil's advocate when you kind of introduce mod support on such a broad level like they are here it can have some abuse from certain companies some of these mods can be paid which obviously is a double-edged sword on one hand hopefully the mod author is getting paid but what cut are they getting what cut is the company getting and of course what cut is Xbox Live getting? And in addition, they can actually restrict what kind of mods you can upload, whether it be only textures or something a little bit more fully fledged affecting gameplay. And honestly, this sounds amazing to me. I'm really excited to see what games start to support this. If you actually look at Steam, you could probably get a decent idea. Games like XCOM and XCOM 2, City Skylines, and even Ark Survival Evolved. Ark in particular has a massive modding scene and it really supports itself on PC. Mod support suddenly coming out on consoles will probably drive a bunch of sales for that game and the old audience actually making a return to it while the developers don't really have to do a ton. And I would wager that a lot of games that maybe didn't have big modding scenes before, such as The Witcher 3, that did have mods but it wasn't super well supported by the developers, may actually take a new look at it. Previously, having good mod support obviously was a massive asset on PC and for acquiring and keeping PC players. Now, if that's also a huge asset on Xbox One, that could be quite massive for which companies actually decide to integrate that and how much money they spend on integrating that. I honestly think this is gonna be a really big deal, and even beyond that, I'm quite curious to see what Bethesda does with this. Obviously, right now, Fallout 4 and Skyrim Special Edition have mods through Bethesda.net. Are they going to 
to now adapt this new system. This new system will likely be a bit more versatile than Bethesda's almost workaround because it is integrated to Xbox at a more fundamental level. I don't know if it's going to remove the modding limit caps because apparently that's tied to the save games. So if you actually increase the mod limit on Xbox One right now, it will break your save game and the save game of everyone else. But honestly, if you're an Xbox user, I would be really excited for this, especially the fact that it might be coming only in about a month or so, which is fairly close. And something else quite cool about this, I feel like it increases the likelihood of us actually getting Fallout 76 mod support earlier on for consoles, or specifically for Xbox One. This same system is actually going to work for Minecraft. Obviously, Minecraft is Microsoft owned, so I'm sure it's going to be one of the premier games showcasing this new mod support in Xbox Live. With Fallout 76, you're going to need to have mods on the server side, seemingly because you're going to have to connect to a server to actually play with those mods and the server has to have those mods. Even though Minecraft does have some custom content, I imagine it will be expanded with this new system and Minecraft being played by many in a multiplayer setting will probably pave the way for this, which is really freaking good for Bethesda and well, all of us. Obviously, this doesn't necessarily mean one thing or the other and I'm sure we'll hear more about it from Bethesda after the system actually is properly revealed. But again, something to keep in mind and to be excited for. That's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. But of course, we have today's psychology fun fact of the day, and it's going to be sponsored by BetterHelp. I've talked about them quite a few times now, so the elevator pitch version is, if you're having some issues mentally with anything, honestly, BetterHelp is pretty much going to be the best option you have for online counseling, whether that be chat-based, voice-based, or even video calls. It's cheaper than in-person alternatives, and you can connect with literally thousands of different options as far as your counselors go, and they are all going to be very qualified to help you. You find a link at the top of the description as to where you can sign up, and I do highly recommend you sign up. Putting off issues like this is never ideal, and honestly, it only takes a few minutes. So you guys might have always heard like, oh, people have enlightening experiences from taking shrooms or other hallucinogenics. Well, a study from 2011 actually looked at a bunch of people that took what would be called magic mushrooms, and for many of them, after having that experience, they were different. Their personality actually had a shift. The most interesting part about this being that they were all in their late 20s to early 30s, and people around that age group don't typically have shifts in personality at all. It's actually a very rare phenomenon because your personality is typically quite solidified at that age. Specifically, they were way more open overall, meaning that they were more open to new experiences, they had broader imaginations, and they valued emotion, art, and curiosity much more than they did before taking that. And it wasn't like, oh, that lasted for a week. In almost all of these cases, it lasted at least 14 months, and for some of them, many years longer, presumably until the study was published. And it's not like this is a one-off phenomenon. There's been follow-up papers finding the exact same thing. I'm not necessarily encouraging you to go and try this, but when you hear somebody maybe talking about their experience with this, maybe don't just write it off right away. There is obviously some validity behind these claims that they can have life-altering experiences. Either way, it's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. As always, again, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.